So here we're looking at the S-Series control box. Let's go ahead and get one thing out of the way here. I understand that this is not going to be a video that a lot of people are going to watch. It's not designed for that. I've already been told that I don't have enough flashy lights. I don't have enough good music. I don't have people moving in the video. And people aren't going to watch it. That's not what this video is designed for. This video is designed for those people that have bought the S-Series machines and they want to understand a little more about what's inside their control box. As a general rule, you should not have to be in your control box much. If you are, that means we're not doing our job very well. However, things are mechanical in nature and if you do have a problem, it's nice to be able to reference a video like this and we'll go through the parts simply if for nothing else if we ever have to discuss a part on the phone you'll know where that part is and what we're talking about all of our s series control boxes are built in the same way so we have congruency across the line and everybody has the same series and same type of box obviously we will make changes from time to time as things get better and we add new features but as a general rule, these boxes will remain the same. So we're going to take a look at your VFD first. This is your variable frequency drive. The VFD's job is to turn your spindle on, turn it off, and also control the speed of the spindle. There are very few settings that you should have to do to this VFD as it's already set up when it comes to you. If you do happen to look at the front of it while it's running, you'll see a three-digit number. This is in Hertz. The VFD operates in Hertz and this directly corresponds over to the spindle speed in RPM. So our next item is going to be your main breaker. This is a 30 amp Snyder breaker. We use Snyder electronics on our breakers and on our contactors. We've had a lot of luck with the durability on these units. So this unit is going to come in the off position. Once you have got your machine wired, this is 220 single phase, three wire, you're going to want to turn that breaker on. And then for the most part, you're not going to need to use that breaker very much because everything's going to be controlled by your master power button on the side of the machine. Again, if you're inside of this machine and you have to work on anything, please make sure that you turn that breaker off and turn the breaker off on your wall. So moving on to the right, this is the number one master contactor. This contactor is what you hear when you push your master power button. The job of this contactor is to control the voltage coming into the box and to make a positive contact when you push that button. Again to the right, you'll see another contactor that looks very similar to the first one. This is going to be your secondary contactor. We put an extra switch on the outside of your box called contact. This is the contactor that it is controlling. This contactor is designed for low voltage use and is normally used in order to control secondary items such as another contactor to turn on and off a vacuum system or lights or anything that you may want to run and use a button on the side of your control cabinet to do it. A reminder is this is not designed to be a high amperage breaker uh, contactor. You should only be running about 10 amps through this. The only thing it's really for is to turn on and off other contactors to control other electrical devices. The next item is going to be normally a small silver device. This is going to be a power filter for the AC power coming into your box. We want to try to clean up that power as much as we can before we send it through the system. So this is an AC220 power filter. Moving on to the right is another silver item. This is pretty easy. This is going to be your AC to DC converter. This is bringing in 220 volts of AC and putting out 24 volts, which is your control voltage. So all of your DC lines inside this system will be 24 volts DC. 
moving directly forward is going to be a large white and silver object. This is going to be a 220 AC to DC converter. This is what's actually powering your stepper drives. Uh, just a side note, this 220 uh, AC to DC converter or transformer is actually putting out uh, 72 volts. It's going to be 36 volts per line. So your stepper drives are actually operating on 72 volts of DC current. Again, moving off to the right is going to be your breakout board. This is your DSP A11 2E control board. Your pendant wire is going to come in through the right hand side and actually plug into the end of this unit. Make sure that you tighten up the silver screws on your cord. This is going to be what is actually doing all the controlling from your pendant. So all of your instructions come into this board and it controls all the relays and the drives. Last but not least is going to be your stepper drives. There's four of them. These devices are what actually power the motors that are moving your machine. There's four of them and all of them are controlled by the DSP A11 breakout board that's sitting on the bottom of the box. Well, it looks like you finally made it to the end of the video. We at Phantom CNC hope that you get many years out of this machine. And realistically, I hope you never have to go inside this box. But if you do, I hope this gives you a hand. And give us a call if you have to go in the box for anything. And we'll be glad to help you. This is Steve, and we appreciate all your business.